right, tonight I have a LG LCD LED set. It uh, is from February 2013, so this is only a couple years old. The set, it's a 42LN5300. Complaint on it is that it won't turn on, and you have to unplug it and plug it in several times, and the set will turn on, and then once it's turned off, it won't start again. Let's just verify what's going on with this bad boy. Okay, the set's powered up. Press the power button. I've got an LG remote here. And nothing's happening. So this one's dead at this moment. Let's get the back off and see what's going on. Complaint initially was you'd have to unplug it and plug it in several times to get it to come on. We'll try toggling the power and see if that makes any difference. Okay, just cycle the power. We'll even try the power button on the back of the set here. Nothing. Completely dead. Let's pull the back and see what's going on. Okay, to identify this set, it's three boards. It's all that's in this television. Over here on the left, this is our power supply. It's going to generate all the voltages for the LED backlights, as well as to operate the television. Over in the middle of the set here, we've got the main board. This has got all your signal processing in it. It's got your analog inputs, your HDMI input. It also has the tuner. And all of the signal processing is done in here. The signal leaves through the low voltage differential signaling or LVDS connector here where it's passed down to the timing controller board which is this one here that's actually right in behind where the stand is. So I'm just showing you this. I'm going to put the base back on it so I can stand it up and then we can do some testing. The control switches are on this board here. And they're connected by this wire over to the main board. So the fact that this set is totally dead and will not start up, does not attempt to start, the first place we have to look at is we have to look at the power supply. But remember, before even touching anything on here, I'm going to want to make sure that all these ground screws are tight. So I'm going to go just give every ground screw on the entire set just a bit of a turn just to make sure that there's no loose grounds because we know from experience that loose grounds can certainly cause problems. So now once I've tightened all the ground screws, let's try it again and see if it works. So I've applied power. We'll try the power button here. See if anything happens. I don't see any light coming through the back from the back of the panel. Normally when the back lights light up, we'll see some light coming through the screw holes here. So I can assume the set is still dead. So now let's just start checking some voltages on the power supply. The first thing I need to check is for our standby voltages because if there's no standby supply coming off the power supply the signal board is not going to be able to turn the set on. It's, it's going to have a constant supply that always runs so that it keeps the microprocessor over here on the signal board alive. So if we lose the standby supply the whole set is not going to work. This is our standby supply up in this corner, this section of the power supply I believe. I haven't really looked at it yet but Typical of a standby supply is going to be a small transformer and an oscillator IC and so forth. So this will be our standby. Let's check our standby voltages. So if we look at our table down here, it's showing that power on is the bottom pin. The next one up should be 3.5 volts. These are our power supply voltages. So I would expect that if I measure my power supply voltage on the second pin up, I know you guys can't see my meter, but I'm looking at it here. I've got 3.3 volts. So our standby voltage is there. It's a little bit low. This says it's supposed to be 3.5, so that might be the problem. So I'm just going to remove the board so I can test it off the of circuit. So I'm just going to undo the connectors here. And that's done just by squeezing the, uh, the pins in, or at least this, this top piece. Squeeze that. These other ones, just get your thumb in and pull the pins down and out. So squeeze and that will open up like that. Now I can take out the power supply board and look at it. Keep in mind whenever you're working on power supplies like this that the, the large capacitors in the primary side can actually store a, a fair bit of voltage because they do have a very high working voltage. 
This is only 68 microfarads, but it's a 450 volt capacitor. And even though it's been unplugged for several minutes now, there's still 8 volts on here. Now, 8 volts isn't going to hurt you, but if you stick your fingers in here when you've got power on it, these are going to be at several hundred volts apiece. So keep your fingers out of the primary side when you're working on these sets. It's always a good idea once you've taken it out to discharge any residual charge on these large filter capacitors just by short circuiting them with the jumper wire. We can do that from the top side or the bottom. So we'll just do it from the top. This is just to discharge any residual charge that might be lingering in these large capacitors. So now I can go to work on the, the other side over here. There's another large capacitor here. This is a 250 volt rated one over here on the primary side. Again, doesn't hurt just to discharge them just to make sure that there's no charge whatsoever. We know that the standby supply is running, it's just that the voltage looks to be a little bit low. So I'm going to be looking at the filter capacitors on the standby. It's going to look at the actual foil traces on it and see where it goes. I'm guessing it's probably going to be these little 10 volt 470 mic capacitors here. Possibly this one here. I'm just going to take a look at the board on the other side and see exactly where they go. The filter capacitor that's mounted right here on the board, this one here is the filter for the 3 volt supply. I've removed it for testing so that I can test it away from all of the other components that were on the board. Uh, zero out my meter and uh, we'll take a look at uh, what the reading of this capacitor is. So this one's coming in at 0 0.05 ohms. No problem whatsoever with that one. And that's the filter on the 3, the three volt supply, the 3.5 volt supply. So it looks like that filter is okay. I took it out of the circuit because when I was measuring it in circuit, I was getting some false readings. So we pulled the cap out to confirm that it's okay. It is, I'm gonna put it back into the circuit now. One thing I noticed about this television is when testing it is that it's not just the 3.3 volt supply that is live. There's actually a 12 volt supply as well, which is live, as well as a 24 volt supply, which is coming up at 23.02. So it's not just the one power supply voltage. All the power supply voltages are live on this set, even when the set's in standby. Just for the hell of it, because of this, the way that this thing's operating, it may be a BGA connection problem underneath this big BGA chip. So I'm just gonna let this thing heat up here for a while and see if we can uh, reflow any of the ball joints underneath it. This is a process I did several months ago on my Onkyo uh, system when the DSP chip broke and it's still holding solid today so I'm going to just let this thing cook here for a while and uh, see whether that makes any difference at all to this set here because our power supply voltages look good and the set occasionally will turn on but it usually won't and once you turn it on and turn it off it won't come back on again so kind of pointing towards it might be something on the signal board here, the main board. So I'm going to let this thing cook for a while and then we'll put it back in the set and see what happens. So now the moment of truth. I've just let both of these BGA chips bake under my little halogen lamp for a couple of hours and get it good and hot. Get it nice and toasty warm enough to melt solder. Just place the board back in the set. I got the power plugged in. Let's turn it on and see whether it works. As you can see, the backlights are now on. I'll even try it with the remote control. There, they're off. Okay, the set would not turn on at all before. Power button again. Set comes on. Let's check it out for a picture. And there we go. Set is working. Turn it off. Now this set would not turn on at all before. Nothing. Power button. There it goes. I would have to say that this is another one that we've saved from the scrap heap. So let's let's go over what it was and what it wasn't. At first thought, I thought it was going to be a power supply issue because. 
the type of symptom that we had here, originally the owner of the set said it was, he couldn't turn it on. If he, if he unplugged the power and plugged the power back in, it would turn on once. It would turn off, it wouldn't come back on. He'd have to unplug the power, plug it back in. That all sounds like a classic problem with the power supply. Upon measuring my voltages though, I found that my 3.5 volt supply was a little bit low, so I'll immediately start thinking maybe we've got a, a bad filter. But checking all the components, checking the capacitors in here, I found none that the ESR value was any indication that it was going bad. So looking at the voltages, I find that this set is not one of these sets that only runs with the standby voltage. The power supply is actually fully running. The 12 and the 24 volt supplies are running. The backlight for the, the 48 volt supply for the LEDs, it's not on, but the 12 and 24 volt supply over to the main board is present all the time. So then I had to start thinking, well, it's gonna be something on this board. And the most obvious thing on a board like this, it's going to be the BGA mounted components, that one and this one. Now there's no way to really other than with a, a proper reflow station, you know, it, it's, it's tough to work on BGA. You can't check them, you can't look at them, you can't see any of the connections that are underneath it. So what I've done in the past and what I did again on this one as you saw, I took my little light fixture that I modified that uses a 50 watt halogen bulb. Now of course we are able to inspect the solder work on some of these other ICs which are conventional surface mounted devices but as you can see these BGA mounted chips these two IC1201 and IC101 the main engine as they call it the XD engine this is a custom ASIC that does all the signal processing there are dozens of connections you can see all the little traces leading underneath that chip there are some more traces that come in from the bottom side. This is a single layer board, so there's no components mounted on the bottom side of this board. Everything's on the top side, but it is a multi-layer board, so there are some connections that come through from the bottom on this IC. How these are applied in the factory, the pick and place machine places the components in place, and there's little balls of solder that's part of the flux that's on the, that they put onto the board. It's like a solder paste with little balls of solder in them. And they place the chip and the board is brought up to temperature to almost the point where solder will flow. And then they hit the components themselves with heat from an infrared, usually from an infrared light. Usually it's like a, a heater, a tungsten heater or whatever that brings the chips up to the melting point to flow the solder and then the chips are cooled. And that's the proper way to reflow something like this is you've got to put it into an oven. The problem is that's all done before these plastic connectors are attached. If you put a circuit board with these plastic connectors into a reflow oven, they're going to all melt and you're going to ruin the board. So a way that I've done before in the past and I did it on my, my uh, uh, Onkyo amplifier is I used a halogen lamp. And I've got the halogen lamp only off the board by a centimeter or so. Uh, if you see that little jig that I made, it's just a light fixture. And uh, it just, it has a little, there's three little prongs that actually held a glass uh, globe. It was a, a counter light, right? Like a kitchen counter light that I had like a dozen years ago in my house. And uh, anyway, it holds it right about the right height. So you're getting maximum heat transfer from the lamp into the IC and of course the black material, the plastic material, the epoxy or whatever the, the uh, material is that they make the IC out of, it's going to conduct heat. It's going to draw that heat right in and it gets that chip really hot. Now I set the thing on top of the board, I let it bake for a good hour each for each chip. I did both of them because I didn't know one or the other can't hurt by flowing them both. Let them bake for a good hour each put the board back in that's all I did and as you can see the television is now working now some people have been critical saying oh this is the this is like what we used to do on the old uh, the old Xbox and it's just a temporary measure and I've heard that before people have said it's a temporary measure it's not gonna last it's gonna break down well I guess time will tell 
how long this will last for. It's got this TV working now. I did the same thing on my uh, Onkyo sound system. There's a video I've published on that. I did exactly the same thing on that. I let it bake for a couple of hours. That was months ago. That unit is still functional. I, I expect that it probably will act up again and then I'll just put the light on there again and let it bake again for a couple of hours and get it going again. But uh, So I, I, I suspect that it probably is going to break down again. I wouldn't say that this is a permanent fix. But then again, uh, BGA uh, soldering is not a permanent solution either. We have more problems these days from BGA soldering than anything else. Now, again, I'm just showing you that I'm able to turn this TV off and on. I just turned it off there. We'll turn it back on. It's turning off and on fine. This is something that it wouldn't do before. When I got it in here, it wouldn't even turn on at all. So I'm pretty confident that I've got this problem resolved. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.